Uh, hello citizens, I'm Omar and I'm going to talk about some nerdy uh, car stuff. So, first up, I want to thank uh, John for suggesting that I do this kind of videos. He's a fellow citizen and he said, well, you'd be good at explaining this. Why don't you explain it? So, here we go. Now, the thing I'm going to explain now is dynamic compression ratio. if I can spell it right. Now what does that mean? We'll, well, first up, what is the compression ratio? Compression ratio is the volume of your combustion chamber and by that I mean the cylinder head and the volume of your cylinder. Here's your piston So your piston's blacked out. Here is your piston. Here's the connecting rod. Then we get to our crank. Here's the connecting rod. And that looks more like it. So the piston is at the bottom and your static or normal compression ratio is this volume which means the volume of the cylinder, the poorly drawn cylinder here. The volume of this cylinder, which some people calculate as the bore halved, then squared, then multiplied. Yeah, yeah I'm using too many uh, brackets, but it's, it, it's clear that way, by pi pi of course being 3.4 for practical purposes even though this is infinite and irrational whatever it's a mathematical weird thingy so you multiply this by this much which is bore halved then squared and then by pi and this gives you the this gives you the area of your bore. Now this thing you multiply by your stroke. Stroke, for those of you that don't know, stroke is the distance between top of the center and bottom of the center. It's how much the piston travels. That's your stroke. So when you hear the phrase stroker kit, I'll explain that in another video, what's bore and what's stroke yeah, more in detail. But for now, let's just focus. Uh, you've got this times pi times stroke, and this gives you this volume. Now, the cylinder head volume, it's a bit weirder because you actually have to measure it on your actual cylinder head. One method is they do this. Imagine this is your cylinder head. These are the valves. It's a four valve. This is the hole for the spark plug. And this is the whole cylinder head poorly drawn as you can see and what they do is just put a kind of like uh, polycarbonate or acrylic plate with a small hole in here and they the, the ones that do this kind of thing they just inject liquid or drip liquid in and and with a syringe so you get a syringe without a needle so you can measure how much liquid you're pouring in let's say this is 10 milliliters and then you get this volume whether it's in liters or in cc's which is cubic centimeters now this volume is is divided by this volume and that's your compression ratio so it's sometimes written as n to one, so 9.5 to one, that's a high compression engine, or a lower compression one, which is five to one, that's super low compression. So that's one, what people mean when they say low or high compression. Now what does dynamic compression ratio mean? Well, dynamic compression ratio is, it has to do with something called a Miller cycle. Miller cycle something that's used in Mazda's Skyactiv engine 
and in any engine with VVT or VVTI or variable valve, valve timing. So when you got your regular valve timing, well, your valve timing determines when a valve opens and when a valve closes. So you can control exactly when a valve closes or opens and how much or how long is it open. So we got this handy model here. This is a cylinder, this is the piston. My fingers are going to be the valves. Now your normal compression ratio would go like this. This is top dead center. Valves are closed. Intake valve opens. Air gets drawn in. Intake valve closes. Air gets compressed. Fuel, air fuel mixture gets ignited. Explodes, produces a power stroke. Piston goes back up again while releasing the exhaust gas. And this goes into the manifold. Now, let's look at it again, but with a Miller cycle. Air goes in. The piston starts to go up, but notice this valve hasn't been closed yet. Now, it's get, now it gets closed. This compresses, combusts, and finally gets rid of the exhaust gas. Now what happened there, what happened there is that by lowering the, by opening the valve when, or rather closing the valve after the piston has hit bottom dead center and when it starts to climb up again, what they do is effectively make this volume smaller because you're compressing less air than if you were to close the valve at bottom dead center. So that's what it's called retarding the valve closing and that has to do a lot with valve timing. Now when you talk about valve timing or even ignition timing you talk about degrees, degrees as in uh, degrees of a circle. So and you talk about it in degrees of crank rotation. So this is your crank. It goes either way. Let's say it goes clockwise. When the piston hits bottom dead center, this crank is going to spin and it's going to make the piston go up. So the more retarded the valve closing is, the less air you compress. And that reduces something called a pumping loss. Pumping loss is basically the loss of energy by compressing air too much. So if we go back to the cardboard model, compressing this amount of air takes more energy and more power than compressing this amount of air. So now you can well start to see why manufacturers love this thing so much because it makes their engines a whole lot more efficient like Skyactiv Mazda 2 liter engines, those are really, really, well, fuel efficient. So, the more you retard this, the less air you are compressing. Now, generally, it's not that. Let the, compre the dynamic compression is not that small, the dynamic compression ratio. Now, it's called dynamic because it varies from engine to engine and can be changed by changing the valve timing. So what happens is piston starts going up, crank is at n degrees or x degrees after bottom dead center which is this. This is bottom dead center, this is top dead center. This is where the crank is right now and this is where the piston is. And at that point the valve can close and the air that would have been pumped or compressed isn't compressed. So if the, if the bottom dead center looks like this and top dead center looks like this, then this section of air, of air isn't compressed. And it actually go, and this volume goes back up into the manifold. So it's different. It gives slightly different response. It, it's more economical. It produces less power but it's also, well, uses a lot less fuel. You can run a leaner mixture when you have 
less compression, you can run a way leaner mixture without knocking. So, how do you figure it out or calculate it? Well, you have to use a bit of math here, nothing complicated. Basically, what you do is, well, you want to get stroke, stroke, halved, and that you multiply by the co by the sign of your crank rotation. Let's call it CR, sign of crank rotation, and that gives you the how long or how much of your stroke or how much your stroke is shortened. So this, so then you go stroke stroke, let's call this A, stroke minus that A quantity and then you have your pretty much effective stroke and then you, that stroke is multiplied by this value so that short stroke, let's call it short stroke short stroke, it has to be multiplied to get that volume Short sure stroke has to be multiplied by the bore halved squared times pi. So basically, this is the uh, bore area or the cylinder top area. Or this bit. And what this does is basically gives you the effective volume or the volume you are compressing. And now you just have to uh, use your combustion chamber volume over your uh, new cylinder volume. Let's call that cylinder volume, and you got your dynamic dynamic compression ratio and that's it that's just it so it's it's really simple well it's not that simple but you get the point this is your dynamic compression ratio and this is how you figure it out any you wanna know anything else or have any doubts well I tell you to ask me but it's better if you ask uh, Google or someone who actually has an engineering degree so ask anyone, if not ask me. What this will do is that your dynamic compression ratio will always be smaller than your static compression ratio. So if you have a 9.5 to 1 standard compression ratio, but you but your engine has this Miller cycle thingy or the variable and the variable valve timing, you have this you have this compression ratio that's actually working so this is the dynamic compression ratio now what what how does this all relate to performance well that's a topic for another video I mean I'm gonna spend like 15 to 20 minutes talking about it but basically lower compression ratios and lower compression or normal compression ratios means you can run more boost in a turbo or supercharged engine, any forced induction application, and a a Miller cycle or a or a lower dynamic compression ratio means that you have a bit less lag in the response because not all of the boost pressure gets into the cylinder, so the pressure in the manifold is maintained. Actually, th this is a whole lot another topic, but basically, lower compression works better for turbocharged engines. Otherwise, it's just for fuel economy, and that's why most manufacturers that have this kind of thing in their engines do this Miller cycle thing. So, anyways, if you actually did not die of boredom watching this, well, I suggest you leave a like. If you did, well, my condolences. You're dead now. Bye bye.